Unlocking and rooting. There are two things that we hear quite a bit whenever we hear about Android and sometimes even when we hear about iOS. But with iOS it's called jailbreaking. They're not the same thing, unlocking and rooting, but it's not too difficult to see why there's some confusion there. I'm Joe Levi, and today on the Android Power User, see if we can't clear up some of that confusion. When we're talking about unlocking and rooting your device, the unlocking part has to do with unlocking the bootloader. There are some other things that you can unlock, like SID and SIM unlocking. We're not talking about those. This is your bootloader. And we talked about the bootloader on the last episode of Android Power User. So if you don't remember that, hit pause and hit this link so you can go back to it. That having been said, locking your bootloader, well, that's something that comes done right out of the box. That's right, your phone or your tablet, chances are it's already locked as soon as you get it and you turn it on. So locking a bootloader is a lot like locking your house. To get in, you have to have a key. It's really a good thing, right? Because it keeps all the bad guys from just walking into your house and stealing all your stuff. The analogy is pretty similar with a bootloader. Except with a bootloader, unlike your house, the manufacturer doesn't give you a key and you can't get into your house. So pretty much the analogy breaks down at that point, but it does keep the bad guys out and it keeps bad applications from doing things that you may not want them to do to your device. When your bootloader is locked, it means you can't go in and put on a custom recovery image. You can't put on a custom ROM. Most of the time you can't even modify system files. It's not all that fun and it doesn't let you do a lot of things that you want to do. Then again, it doesn't let you do a lot of things that the OEMs and probably the carriers too don't want you to do, which is probably the leading force on why bootloaders come locked straight from the factory, even when the majority of the OEMs have said, we will provide a tool to let you unlock your bootloader. They just didn't tell us when. Most of the time, that's after the device has been out on the market for a while. Other times, it's right away. The device is released, a week or so later, you can unlock it. With Google devices, you can unlock them the minute you get them. Google's got a tool. You just connect it to your computer and OEM unlock, ta-da, you're done. So now that we've talked about unlocking, let's talk about rooting. They usually go hand in hand and they usually go in that order, though not necessarily always in that order. Rooting is giving your device root level permissions. Usually immediately after you've done that, you apply a package of tools that lets you use super user permissions and super user tools. Root and super user, though technically not the same type of permissions, they're not exactly the same, but we use those words pretty much interchangeably in the Android community, even though they're technically not the same. Most of what we do is super user. Super user, you get a whole bunch of tools that let you do all kinds of things. Usually that comes along with a package called BusyBox that lets you do all kinds of low level stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to do because those tools aren't included. Well, because nobody needs those tools, right? Except for Android power users and we do and we can. Depending on your device, you may not need to unlock before you root. In fact, you might be able to do something called a soft root. Now a soft root is something that goes away when you turn off your device or specifically when you power it down, not just when you put it into sleep. But still, it's something nice that you can have and get around and do what you need to do. And then, of course, you lose it when you, when you power down and, and back up. And it's a pain and it's annoying. But, oh well, at least we were able to do it. Permaroot is when you've got root all the time. It's a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Because, you see, you've just essentially taken the locks off of your door. And I know we're mixing the unlocking and the rooting now. But now any app that you install on the device has the possibility to use all of those root level permissions. They can walk right into your house and do whatever they want. Steal your stuff, you know, steal more of your stuff, sleep in your bed, eat your cereal, just dogs and cats living together, total chaos. Hopefully they don't do that, but they can, and you've gotta be kind of careful when you are applying root level permissions. 
But what you can do with it, remember all those bloatware apps that you had preloaded on your, uh, your phone? I'm not gonna mention any carrier names, but one of them whose colors are bright red comes to mind. I don't like them. I want them gone. And I can't do that unless I have root. And then I can go ahead and clean them out real easy. It's not difficult at all. But because they are system apps, I can't remove them until I have root. Okay, so talking about system apps, I can replace system apps. Let's say I've got a Nexus 7, and I want to be able to use it as a honkin' big phone. You can do it. You've got to replace some system apps to be able to do it. And of course, there's no cellular circuitry or antennas inside, so you, you got to do it over Wi-Fi and whatnot, so it's kind of complicated. But luckily, we have an article. We talked about that at Pocket Now. There will be a link in the article at Pocket Now if you want to go and find out how to use your Nexus 7 as a phone. But you can do that with root because you can replace some system files and some change some system configurations. It's pretty easy if you follow the instructions precisely. We'll just leave it at that. Some other stuff that root lets us do Ironically, it lets us back up and restore our phones, and our tablets, and our phablets, and everything in between. Why can't we do that without root? Well, you've got to be able to get down and have access to those system level files to be able to access and copy them off. And without root, you don't have that. Now, theoretically, you could if there was a backup API, but of course, there's not. So the only way to really back up your device so that you can restore it later is if you have root access. It's kind of frustrating, but that one reason alone, to me, is justification for rooting your device. And there we have it. Unlocking and rooting in a nutshell. And the bootloader, if you didn't catch up on that, make sure you watch last week's episode of Android Power User. If you've got any questions, any comments, if you've got recommendations for future topics, please leave those over at pocketnow.com. We'll have a link for it right here if you're not over on pocketnow.com already, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, make sure you head over to PocketNow so you can leave comments over there. That's where I will be to answer your questions, and that's where the rest of the PocketNow staff will be to help with your comments, your questions, complaints, and really anything else that you want to vent to us at that point. If you've got some other cool stuff that you can do with Root, let us know that as well. For PocketNow and the Android Power User, I'm Joe Levi.